load or power of the engine and and here you see that we are now in gas mode and this is the sequence that we will look at in the, in the next uh, transfer how it, uh, it goes through another interesting feature here is that you can see we are now at 83 percent load uh, the gas pressure actual gas pressure on the engine is 8.6 bar um, you may have seen the figure 16 bar gas pressure requirement for our engines uh, before um, but in reality in reality it's all that we can in most of the cases uh, live with a much lower gas pressure uh, typically if the heating value of the gas is uh, in a normal range we would run uh, up to full load with only about uh, 10 or 11 bar uh, supply pressure. Uh, 16 bar gas pressure is required for uh, special cases when the heating value of the gas or the calorific value of the gas is decreasing and then we need to compensate with a higher gas pressure in order to inject uh, the correct amount or mass of, of fuel uh, at every cycle. Uh, that can typically happen on LNG carriers when a lot of nitrogen uh, boil-off uh, is generated at the beginning. Uh, but as soon as this is over, gas pressure can be reduced to 10, 11 bar uh, or even lower for typical operating loads. So you see the engine is, uh, is uh, picking up load. Now we are at 80, 88% now. Uh, take some time to, to load up as on, on every engine. One more thing which you can see here is the fuel drain pressure which is now um, set to 800 bar. So this is uh, the fuel pressure of the diesel fuel system. Uh, even uh, if we are running or even though we are running in gas mode now, <coughs> the fuel rail pressure is kept on this level um, and that's very much for, for uh, safety reasons that if whatever happens the engine needs to, to change to diesel mode again that the diesel system is fully ready and the diesel system can uh, pick up operation uh, of the engine immediately without any change in power or speed. And this is what you will see then uh, in the next point when we uh, trip from 100% uh, load from gas mode to diesel without any change in speed or power. We are changing back quickly to this uh, gas pressure page uh, to show you again now the engine is running at 96% power uh, gas pressure 
actual gas pressure is 10 bar, so we're well below 16 bar. And of course, our target is always to minimize gas pressure here um, in order to minimize uh, compressor power also. Okay, so now we are approaching full load in gas mode. Uh, now we have reached 100% uh, uh, power, as you can see. <coughs> Again, gas pressure 11 bar or below 11. transfer or a trip from full load in diesel uh, to have in, in gas to diesel operation, sorry. Uh, and what is interesting here is uh, the, if you look at the emissions, now we are full load in gas mode and you see NOx emissions, uh, unfortunately a bit uh, small for people in the back rows. Uh, NOx emissions are about uh, 100 ppm or below. And, uh, you also see other emission readings here, but uh, it's very interesting to see when the engine trips to diesel and of course then moves into, uh, into normal diesel combustion mode that uh, NOx emissions are dramatically uh, changed. Uh, 90 or 100 ppm NOx is something like uh, 0.5 grams per kilowatt hour. So this is well, well below uh, any uh, emission limits, uh, IMO tier 3 emission limits. Yes, please uh, change the diesel. So now the engine will, will uh, change to diesel mode. Uh, it will typically take uh, a short while to see this in the emission measurements because of the delay time of the, uh, the sampling systems. And, uh, okay, now you can already see uh, this uh, changing. You can see how NOx emissions here rise dramatically from uh, typical NOx emissions uh, in gas mode to typical figures in diesel. And again, the engine keeps running, is in diesel mode now, it's, uh, it runs with the same speed, there is no interruption, um, no power reduction for this uh, needed, and it just uh, keeps, on, uh, keeps on running. Now again to just uh, show you this page. Yes, please go down. Again, you see the main page here. Uh, full load in uh, in diesel mode now. Um, full nominal speed. And uh, as said before, now the, the output of the engine is uh, is being reduced to uh, to fifty percent.
And that's now very much the same as on any diesel engine also. Naturally, you will see now with the engine load coming down that uh, scavenger pressure, turbocharger speed is going down. <coughs> Actually, the reason we're doing this in diesel mode is that we would just like to show you a transfer at another uh, load point also at 50%. Uh, we could have done this same thing in gas mode, but uh, I think it's better to demonstrate uh, a transfer to gas mode at lower loads also. When it comes to general performance data, you will also see some more explanations this afternoon in, uh, in our presentation. So we have some measurements uh, of this uh, engine here, which we would like to, to show you later. Okay, now again, the page is changed, uh, and the transfer is now uh, initiated. This is something that is very simple, to change operating mode from diesel to gas or vice versa, is, is literally just pressing a button. Uh, what would happen then is that the system checks if this gas fuel system is ready. Uh, now you see we are running in diesel mode and move to transfer. Uh, Transfer preparations are ongoing now, and that's what I mentioned before, that uh, is what takes most of the time to prepare the system and the engine uh, for transfer. You will see the sequence then here, it says uh, GVU, gas valve unit, uh, prepare for gas, uh, ready for gas release. 
uh, and so on. That's the sequence that uh, the system goes through every time uh, the engine is changed to gas mode, and that's very much for safety reasons and you know, in order to fulfill classification requirements. Now we have release gas command. Uh, the mode has changed from diesel mode to transfer mode, and now the, uh, the transfer is, uh, is ongoing. So the diesel amount is reduced, being reduced now, and the gas is, is increasing. And that's what is, uh, is shown here. You can see this diesel bar, which uh, becomes smaller, and the gas bar becomes bigger. And what in fact happens is that the total fuel amount needs to be kept constant, so that the engine speed remains constant, and that's controlled by the, by the, by the speed governor. Uh, what is happening then is that the fuel command signal from the speed governor is split in two pieces, so in a gas and in a diesel part, and uh, is going now through these ramps all the way until uh, the engine is running at 100% gas only. And you see here engine speed during this transfer period here is, is very stable. The engine load is very stable, uh, so yeah, this is just uh, going as a, as a routine process. What you also see here is this uh, gas concentration measurement on the piston underside. Uh, there is a measurement of the, of the concentration uh, on the piston underside for uh, yeah, also as a classification requirement first of all, but also to indicate if, uh, if something goes wrong. Now you see the level is about 3% uh, of the lower explosion limit and now it has actually changed uh, to full gas operation. And you see here now, operating mode is, is, uh, is gas. So no diesel besides the small uh, amount of pilot fuel which is injected. Okay, now while the engine load is being reduced again to, uh, or further to, to, to low load operation on gas, uh, we would like to show you uh, a short movie, as, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, a short movie of the assembly or from design uh, and testing, component testing on the way to <coughs> engine assembly. Uh, after that movie, we'll have uh, our colleague Adrian Siegfried uh, uh, here to give you uh, production feedback here uh, of how it went with all the manufacturing and, and assembly. So please enjoy the movie first and then the presentation of Mr. Secret. <coughs> This is an example here of a design of a gas admission valve. So that's the valve which injects gas into the uh, cylinder. And of course, we're working with, uh, with uh, all the state-of-the-art uh, design tools and uh, virtual uh, validation tools also. After the first designs, then, we manufacture prototype components, which you see here. Again, the gas admission valve, which is installed on the uh, test rig, specific test rig for this. 
There we test the uh, functionality of components. Now you see the valve uh, as it's working. So it's a functionality check. We can do a first uh, reliability check or we can find if there is any major design failure or design mistake. And uh, that's what is typically done on, on the test rigs before components are uh, released for manufacturing for actual production engines. And this is a summary now of the engine assembly at uh, Doosan. Some uh, very nice uh, illustrations here. Specific components, you will see them on the engine later on. We have, for example, pilot injection uh, valve. Uh, this is the gas valve unit which controls the gas pressure to the engine. The gas admission valve, again, the one which was uh, shown on the test rig before with, uh, with the double wall gas piping. Uh, you will get to see all of this uh, on the engine uh, just after this uh, demonstration. Okay, so now I would like to uh, welcome Adrian Siegfried here uh, to have a short uh, presentation. Uh, he is our general manager for licensee support uh, and has been in Korea here for many years, so I think many of, of you know him very well. Adrian, please. Thank you. Good morning, Busan, dear customers. <laughs> it's nice to see so many interested visitors uh, at Busan. Uh, I believe actually that our DF engine has really great future and seeing so many interested faces here, I believe we are on the right track. We're just about to start. I will explain a little bit from the I will uh, explain a little bit about the manufacturing feedback from this uh, SK shipping project which was built here at Busan. And this is a uh, brief content of my presentation. So we start with the timeline to give an overall idea. The X62 type engine was introduced in Korea actually, first time, February 2014 in Ulsan. Shortly after we mastered this engine, we started with the XDF component designing. The project order for the current uh, project here, this came in September 2014. And roughly uh, mid of 2015, we started with the production side. Assembly started uh, somewhere uh, early December. By Christmas, the engine was almost completed. In January, we had then uh, the commissioning, uh, followed by uh, R&D testing until early March. And this is where we are today, April 5th. Now, something from the production period. Uh, as you may know, we have uh, site offices as our Korean licenses, so we performed a close follow-up during the manufacturing stage in cooperation with our uh, Winter Tour design office to detect, let's say, at an early stage, shortcomings on the drawing side, but also on the quality side, component side. First time right, this is the idea. We also had a strong focus to localize uh, as many as possible DF components in Korea from the very beginning, because of course this is beneficial for all. Only very few key components were supplied from which this <coughs> We can see here key component, this gas emission valve, which you have seen now before already. This is uh, an impression from the double wall gas piping at Songil. 
uh, supplying it conventional bed plate okay as well. The main assembly took place uh, December till uh, beginning of January. We had uh, two engineers from uh, our design office, uh, Switzerland, joining at that time. Actually, this is when they made the movie, one of them. And we uh, say through this close follow-up and uh, um, good cooperation, also with Tucson, I have to mention here, we could avoid major drawbacks or mistakes. Overall, the main assembly went uh, pretty smooth. And we should also mention that the earlier experience from Tucson on the PIL engine, the PIL project, which at that time was also a, a pilot project, the first 672 uh, in the world, this was very helpful. Commissioning, roughly two weeks in January, we had uh, key persons from our head office joining to support the local team because this is not only the world's first 62DF, this was also the first DF in Korea. So it was for all of us kind of a learning experience and we had to work together to make this happen. We uh, faced, of course, a few bottlenecks and uh, challenges, as can be expected, but the overall timeline could be kept. Also thanks to Tucson's great support, uh, night shifts and weekends, uh, this was very much appreciated working together to stay on track, stay on schedule. First engine start mid of January, the first gas runs was, uh, took place uh, late in January, and thereafter, pretty much right away, R&D tests start. Now with every new engine, uh, we have to perform extensive testing because we want to know that what we designed on the computer is actually working in reality. And this means a big part, a big chunk here was the automation side for, uh, let's say, the various transfer states, uh, safety systems, etc. We have uh, software optimization, performance, engine performance uh, tests and optimization, uh, temperature optimization, stress measurements. The full package was applied here. <coughs> and this overall went quite smooth. Here is actually an impression of the testing team enjoying fresh air next to the engine water break during their, du uh, during their job. We have a testing team in Korea, uh, established about three years ago. They uh, were supporting quite much here, but naturally we also had to bring in uh, DF specialists from headquarters with their experience. Outlook. Yeah, from the past to the present <coughs> to the future. We have uh, this week, Thursday and Friday, the official shop test with SK shipping and charter total. Two days, diesel mode and gas mode. The second engine uh, you will see later is actually just in build up stage next to number one engine. Bedding was mid of March. Uh, meanwhile, it's pretty much progress. Looks different. Engine installation somewhere uh, mid of this year. And as per current expectation, we would have a C trial early next year with a delivery somewhere in uh, May. Thanks to SK Shipping, I found this photo on their homepage. Well, so far, so good. We are uh, actually pretty glad that uh, no major issues during the engine productions were encountered. We had the usual minor issues, I would say, with the drawings, uh, last minute modifications, but sorry, live feed. The assembly went uh, quite smooth, in fact better than expected. It was certainly also positive that the uh, X62 engine was built before as a pure diesel engine. Uh, we had the uh, let's say challenges during the commissioning I mentioned, but uh, thanks to the great support from Tucson, uh, working together, this could be mastered in time. No significant delays of the whole project. R&D tests pass quite smooth. Test results, they are promising. We have seen before, IMO tier 3 could be met. Very nice. Um, Post-optimization tests, as of today, I believe are not planned. Uh, this is actually also quite seldom on a prototype because normally, first
first engine shows some problems, some weaknesses that have to be improved. But in this case, it looks quite good. It's nice. And today we are here for the 62, but the 72 DF engine is in the starting up. So middle of this year, again at Busan, I'm very happy, the world's first commercial X-72 DF engine will be built. It's nice. Thank you. Absolutely. Questions? Morning, Malcolm Burke, Shell. Uh, what's the gas temperature uh, when it's injected? Uh, yeah, we have a specification for this, uh, not for the te for the temperature when it's injected, but for the feed temperature mm -hmm. uh, to the engine, which is uh, zero to sixty between zero and sixty degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. um, You've made uh, quite a few comments regard or uh, measurements regarding NOx, but I noticed on the was it the emissions panel, um, THC total hydrocarbon, uh, there was uh, in excess of an order of magnitude reduction uh, between uh, gas running and diesel running. It dropped from about 650 to 45, which obviously in reverse means there's uh, going from diesel to gas, uh, we're looking at a much higher uh, total hydrocarbon content. Now, given that the uh, gas, the greenhouse gas equivalent of methane, unburned methane, is uh, somewhere in the region of 20 to 25 times that of the CO2 uh, that, it's, uh, that we're cutting out, um, is there not a, a cause for concern there regarding uh, the the, 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 the well-known phenomenon of uh, methane slip, which was, uh, that was quite, uh, quite ably demonstrated by your, uh, the, the readings there. Uh, yeah, we actually have some material and the measurements uh, results in the presentations this afternoon. So, uh, exactly on this topic also. So if you don't mind, I would actually propose to continue now with, the, with this program, mm -hmm. as long as the engine is running, and uh, get back to your questions later this afternoon very happy to, to answer them no later problem. in the session if it's okay for you. Of course, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we get uh, to the end of the demonstration program. And, uh, and what you see here now is that the engine... A second... What you see now is that now the engine is running in gas mode, 5.3% load, and uh, you see the speed now is, is very low. Uh, low load operation on gas, and these uh, low loads, 5% and even